the Eslot chains, and leverage such bank share to be able to raise and also at our harbor. In doing so, John Mahama was showing he was ahead of the curve. And if Baumia had any humility, he would have learned from John Mahama and not superintended over the most monumental and reckless borrowing which has today brought Ghana the shame of being able to pay her debts and reduce this beautiful country to an object of ridicule all over the world. In addition, it was Muhammad's vision and toil that yielded 960,000 metric tons of cocoa production in the year 2016. Today, cocoa production has declined to below 500,000 metric tons. How these clueless and visionless Baumia can even have the audacity to boast about bold solutions beggars belief. We submit to you that Baumia has a massive vision deficit and cannot be compared to John Mahama in any way, shape, or form. Two, responsibility deficit. A true leader takes responsibility for his words and works. He does not take the credit for good things done and seek to blame others for the things that are not good. President Mahama, when he took over from President Mills, did not run away from the previous policies. He could have chosen to create the impression that the single spine salary policy, the implementation of which caused massive problems for our economy, was a policy that he, John Mahama, disagreed with. Instead, like a true leader, who has honor, truth, and a sense of responsibility. He took full responsibility for brought. Particularly, the storm which led to about 70% of all of our taxes being what we call the compensation package. Now, it was this expenditure storm that John Muhammad described in the analogy of the meats being down to the bones with the Baumia-led MPP has deliberately continued to misrepresent as economic mismanagement. Dr. Baumia is running away from what clearly are policies he considered not to be good policies of the very government he serves in as vice president. Has he even had the humility to apologize to the country for any of those policies? No. John Mahama demonstrated a high sense of responsibility. Baumia demonstrated that he has a massive responsibility deficit. Such a person does not have the character to lead our nation. If Dr. Baumia has shown that he can literally stab Nanako Fuado in the back by way of running away from poor policies while taking credit for the good things done, who else is Dr. Baumia not able to betray? and throw under the bus. If you can betray the man who overlook other very qualified party officials to pick you an outsider who was not even a party person as running mate, then no one is safe under Baumia. A Judas cannot be entrusted with the leadership of Ghana. <laughs> President John Dramani Mahama took full responsibility for Doomso, even though Doomso was neither caused by him nor President Mills. But has been the problem of successive governments failing to ramp up energy supply to match up with demand. President John Dramani Mahama blamed nobody and went ahead and resolved that energy crisis one whole year before he left office. What has been the reaction of Baumia to the unprecedented economic collapse. What he cannot blame Nanako Fuado for, he will find another scapegoat. COVID-19, Russia-Ukraine war, and President John Dramani Mahama. Do not be surprised if very soon he blames COVID-19, Russia-Ukraine war, and Mahama for the black catastrophic don't be surprised at all <laughs> ladies and gentlemen of the media COVID-19 came along in the year 2020 
However, the economic problems began as early as 2019, just after they exited the IMF program. As early as 2019, budget deficit had already reached 7%. The city depreciated by nearly 13%. Debt to GDP ratio rose and was already above 60%. So the problem of the economy started way before COVID. So anybody trying to gaslight you into believing that the problem is because of COVID, the person is simply taking Ghanaians for fools. The failure to take responsibility on the part of Baumia shows that he has not got the humility to accept when he's wrong. If you cannot take responsibility for your poor policy decisions, which predated COVID, Ghana cannot be safe in your hands. Three, credibility deficits. If there is a single area where Alaji Baumia has the biggest character deficit, it is the arena of credibility and trustworthiness. And we all know the critical value of trustworthiness in life in general and in leadership in particular. A few rhetorical questions will suffice. Now here they come. How can you be trusted when you proclaim yourself as the leader of a solid economic management team and yet land the economy in the total collapse we see today? How can you be trusted when you proclaim in 2012 that when the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate will expose you, only to turn around in 2019 when the currency was fast depreciating. And then you say that you made that statement rather in 2014 and not in 2012 at the time when the fundamentals were relatively stronger. How can you be trusted? How can you be trusted when you proclaim that you will move the economy from taxation to production only to heap myriads of taxes on suffering Ghanaians? How can you be trusted? When you proclaim that your so-called solid economic management team has stabilized the CD dollar rates and locked the dollar and left the padlock with the IGP, mm -hmm. only for the CD to break jail right from 2019 when it depreciated by nearly 13% and now pushing towards 13 CDs to the dollar. How can you be trusted when you boasted that under your economic leadership, Ghana will see growth and growth and growth and jobs and jobs and jobs only for Ghana to experience unprecedented levels of unemployment seen in the recent history of our country. How can you be trusted when you boldly claim that no village or community in Ghana will have water or toilet problem within the first 18 months of being elected? How can you be trusted when you still claim in February 2024 that doing so was fixed by your government? When you yourself admitted back in 2016 in the premises of multimedia that John Mahama fixed doom so but should not be praised for doing so. How can you be trusted when you declared we don't have to borrow for roads? The money is here. All we need is to tow the roads and we'll get the money to build all the roads we need. How can we trust you? How can we trust you when you promise that all SHS students will receive free tablet in the year 2023? and you've done nothing about that. How can you be trusted when you deliberately lied to the people of Cape Coast in 2020 that a brand new harbor was being built for them? I mean, it's capable of promising harbor even where there's no sea. Sadly, that is, that is the person we are talking about. He can, he can promise a harbor even when there's no sea. How can you be trusted when on your own free will you promise that the MPP government will start constructing roads with concrete instead of asphalt. Not a gun was put on your head, on your own free will. You make this promise. What have you done about it? Nothing. How can you be trusted when you promise the construction of 16 model schools for Zungo communities in all the 16 regions of Ghana in the presence of His Eminence, the National Chief Imam? Oh my God. It's capable of even lying in the presence of the chief imam. God of mercy. The examples of the deliberate lies are too numerous to exhaust. Friends from the media, 
On the issue of the MPP flabbered deceptive promise to scrap some taxes, let us critically examine the obtuse logic that he's canvassing. Essentially, this is what he's saying to the people of Ghana. I know that together with President Akufuado, we have imposed several draconian taxes on you, but endure them for the next 10 months. While I continue in office as Vice President on the ticket of the new Patriotic Party and as Chairman of the Economic Management Team, after enjoying the hardships imposed on you by my government and by for the MPP, and then I promise to scrap just three of the about 40 taxes we have imposed on you in the last eight years. Think seriously about this, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we insist that a vote for Baumia is in reality just a third term of Nanako Fuado. It's simply the status quo. Ladies and gentlemen, this so-called promise comes from the same men who have used flattery to deceive you with their promise to move Ghana from, product, from taxation to production. The Vice President's previous promises to reduce the tax burden on, on Ghanaians, not to tax our mobile money wallets, and to lower import duties on spare parts are just a few of the promises that have turned into lies. The same man suddenly thinks Ghanaians have a short memory and is once again promising to scrap taxes to hoodwink the Ghanaian electorate. Should we remind him that Ghanaians still remember his instrumental role in crafting the obnoxious e-levy policy, as was confirmed publicly by the then Minister for Information, Kojo Opon Krumah, and John Buedu, the former General Secretary of the NPP. We still remember his important role in the recent IMF negotiations. His actions have resulted in the implementation of the emissions levy, which many consider useless and the imposition of VAT on previously exempt items. We in the NDC have always opposed the draconian taxes imposed on Ghanaians by the insensitive Akufuado Baumia government. We and our gallant members of parliament have always stood on the side of the suffering Ghanaian people and businesses. Our advice to the Vice President is that if he has indeed turned a new leaf and has seen the lie like Saul on his way to Damascus. He should show genuine repentance by first apologizing to Ghanaians and then join the NDC to scrap these taxes now and not in the future. Wow. The Ghanaian people cannot live through another day of this suffocating taxes, let alone 10 good remorse or penitence about deliberately lying and conning the people of Ghana. A man who believes that leaders can continue to fool all the people all the time. A man whose words cannot be trusted is a man who is not fit to lead. Who among you will entrust his business in the hands of a man who cannot be trusted to tell the truth. Who among you will entrust his private property or business into such a hand? Imagine, therefore, the greater tragedy of committing Ghana and her 30 million of citizens and her future into the hands of a man whose words are worth very little and who does not understand the meaning of credibility and trustworthiness. Four, gratitude deficits. A true leader acknowledges the contributions of his predecessors. True leaders understand that leadership is like a relay race, and he or she builds the new by acknowledging and appreciating what contribution was handed over to him. Mills Mahama led NDC acknowledge that the N1 highway was the accomplishment of the Kufo-led MPP, even though the entire work was virtually done during the tenure of Mills Mahama. Mills Mahama-led NDC similarly did not take credit, did not take any credit for the building of the Bui Dam, even though the administration even borrowed additional money to see to the completion of the Bui Dam projects. 
When eventually the Bui Dam was being commissioned, President Kufo was invited and duly acknowledged as a leader whose government secured the finance for the dam. This gratitude, just a minute, this gratitude is a mark of a secure leader. Unfortunately, Dr. Baumia has a massive gratitude deficit. Now, it takes somebody who does not show gratitude to claim that the Tema to Akonsobo, now Mpakadan real line, is the achievement of the MPP government. When all records show that the financing was secured in 2016, at the time I was in charge of the transport ministry. Okay. One whole year before Nana Akufuado Baumia came into office. Cabinets and parliamentary approvals were also finalized before John Mahama left office in January of 2017. Two, it shows somebody who does not show gratitude to claim that Dumso was not resolved before the coming of the MPP in 2017. When Baumia himself publicly declared that John Mahama should not be unduly, should not unduly celebrate for solving the energy crisis because you are the one who brought it in the first place. Nana Poku of the MPP, I think he stood uh, in the flatbearer race of the MPP, who also is into energy, has publicly also stated that it was the JM led NDC that solved the problem of Dumso. Yes. You have somebody who today is showing such ingratitude and doesn't want to acknowledge that this is the work that has been done by the predecessor. To claim that the MPP government introduced the online passport application system when the truth is that the online application system was launched under John Mahama in December 2016. It is somebody who does not show gratitude to claim that the card was nothing to write home about until January 7, 2017, Dr. Baumia deliberately ignored the significant contributions of the NDC Mahama administration in developing the Ghana card system to what it is today. The fact that by 2016, the Mahama administration had already passed the law that makes the Ghana card the sole document for identification purposes for any transaction, that's the LI 2111. The, system, the government at the time had made sure that biometric and demographic data had already been collected on about 16 million Ghanaians. We had processed about 4.7 million cards, distributed about 900,000 cards, and procured 9 million blank cards. Upon assumption of office in 2017, Dr. Baumia constituted a three-man committee headed by Prof. Kenatefua to review the contract and implementation of the Ghana card system. The committee established the facts enumerated above, which is contained on page one of the report, and recommended the use of the existing database to continue where the NDC left off. Indeed, the NIA boss, Prof. Kenatefua, told Parliament that the contract that was signed by the NDC Mahama administration with the margins group is the same contract that is being implemented today. Yet, somebody suffering from such massive gratitude deficit refuses to acknowledge this job that has been done by the predecessor. Clearly, this government only came to continue the implementation of a system that had already been developed by the NDC Mahama government as a continuation of what was started under President Kufour and continued by President Mills of Blessing Memory. The Ghana card credit must therefore be shared by all successive governments who have contributed to where we are today. Baumia does not even credit his boss, Akufuado, even though he's in disguise, just a third term of, he's just a third term of Nana Akufuado. But we need to still call him out for trying to play a fast one on the nation by conveniently throwing his boss under the, his boss under the bars. But Baumia, you know what? We see your game, and we are not going to be fooled by it. Now, if Dr. Baumia finds it difficult to acknowledge and show gratitude for what a predecessor meant, why can't And here are some of them. A sinking fund that had $250 million 
for the repayment of the remainder of the first euro bond that Ghana contracted under President Kufo was handed over to Nana Kufo Ado A Ghana infrastructure and investment fund of 270 million was handed over to the two of them. A stabilization fund of $250 million, which the government fell on when COVID broke in 2020, was handed over to them. An ESLA fund of not less than 3 billion CDs per year was handed over to them. Cocoa output of 930,000 metric tons handed over to them. A gross international reserve of $6.2 billion handed over to them. A balance of payment surplus handed over to them. Two new oil fields that accounted for the 8% growth that the MPP got in 2017 handed over to them. They boast about that 8% growth but are unable to show gratitude for the government that toiled to make sure that 8% became a reality. Ghana is in bank. That became the vehicle to fund the 1B1F was handed over to them. The Canadian finance to the agri sector that MPP used for the planting for food and job handed over to them. The buffer stock that became crucial for the planting for food and jobs handed over to them. 637 million of the 937 million IMF deal that the NDC government went into was inherited and drawn down by the Akufuado Baumia government. Yes they pretended that they came to meet a mess. The massive stock of energy infrastructure, health infrastructure, educational infrastructure, transport and water infrastructure. In short, the biggest legacy of infrastructure bequeathed to any administration in the history of the Fourth Republic, and possibly the most since the independence of Ghana, was handed over to Nana Kufuado and Baumia. An ungrateful person cause all the above an economic mess left behind. What a massive gratitude deficit. Baumia is clearly not fit for leadership. John Mahama's ability to acknowledge what work was previously done makes him a person who has got gratitude and such a person is truly fit for leadership. Five. Competency deficit. Competence must be the hallmark of a true leader. He must possess the capacity to accomplish a lot, even with minimal resources. That's exactly what Ghana saw when John Mahama was in charge of the economic management team and later became the president of the republic. It takes competence to bring inflation from 21% where it reached around May of 2009 down into single digits and keep it consistently there for 33 long months, almost three years, the longest period in the Fourth Republic and possibly since independence. Incompetent Baumia, as head of economic management team, could barely keep inflation in single digits for any appreciable period and actually supervise the same going all the way up to 54% when all over Africa no serious country experienced any such level of inflation. And he had the temerity to call John Mahama incompetent. It is competence to accomplish the record of high growth Ghana saw under JM as head of economic management team. About 8% in 2010 before oil, 14% in 2011 with non-oil standing at 8%. So it's not just about oil, it's also about the non-oil growth being as strong as 8%, which is the highest MPP has seen since they've been in power over the last eight years. Under John Mahama, as head of economic management team, another 9% was chalk again in the year 2012 as well. The highest growth rate under Baumi over to the MPP by the Mahama-led NDC. It takes competence to achieve cocoa output of 1 million metric tons, as we saw in the year 2011, and almost repeated the same in the agricultural sector in 2016 under GM. Under incompetent Baumia, cocoa production is now about half of that quantum. It takes competence 
to get a B plus rating that Ghana recorded in 2012 when John Mahama was head of the economic management team. And that incompetent Baumia. This is an absolute disgrace to Ghana. A proud nation that has been brought onto her knees by a disastrous economic management team led by a man who talks big but delivers little. In eight years, when he served as head of economic management team and president, total debts accrued stood at about 110 billion cities. And I'm talking here about we took the debts from about 10 billion at the close of 2008 to 120 billion cities at the close of 2016. With this relatively small quantum of resources, Ghana can point to arguably the most massive infrastructure investment seen in our country, in the Fourth Republic. In the whole of 2016, not even one city was received from the Bank of Ghana, yet inflation was brought down to 15.4%, table rates down to 16%, debt to GDP stood at 57%, non-oil GDP was 4.3%, Budget deficit stood at 6.1%. Capital expenditure as a percentage of GDP stood at 4.2%, while the CD depreciated by only 9.6%. It was in that same year that the foundations were established 